this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is January the 7th, 2019. And first thing I want to talk about before I turn it over to Vegas is I'm starting a new challenge account. I do this every year. This year I'm doubling it though. I'm going to start with two grand and I want to make a thousand percent on it, which will bring it up to 20,000, right? Yes. Or is that 500%? I want to bring. Well, good. I want to bring it to at least twenty thousand by the end of the year, or maybe higher. I might hit hit a good lucky streak. Last year's challenge, I started at a thousand and made it up to thirty six hundred. So I deposited that sixteen hundred back into my savings, and I'm starting fresh with two grand this time. So if you'd like to follow me, you can join our chat room. Everybody else will be there witnessing my ups and downs on it. I do believe that. We are going to have a, a, a all all time high in the market this year, so that's my two thousand dollar challenge, and I'm going to bring this back in control to Vegas. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, we have a lot of picks to talk about as well. So we will be talking about the spy. We're going to talk about Roku. We're going to talk about AXSM drawings which was yesterday's video bonus and we're going to talk about APPS AMD and you know what I want to give you guys another bonus because I'm feeling lucky with these bonuses so um, I do want to mention that uh, you know with re the importance of the 50 day moving average which was mentioned in the investors business daily and they were mentioning that and I'm going to quote what they said that, you know, the three indexes now face an upward stretch before reaching their 50 day moving average. So retaking the support at that level would mark the next step in the market regaining positive momentum. So the Dow Jones, the S&P and the NASDAQ composite all ended Friday 4% below their 50 day lines. So pretty much what has to happen in the next few weeks is uh, for this rally to just keep moving higher. I mean, you guys heard the talks this morning that, you know, U.S. and China trade talks were starting in Beijing, and that should lead, hopefully, to a breakthrough soon. And, you know, it's the first time that the teams have met since December 1st. You know, you guys remember when uh, Mr. Trump and Xi, Mr. Xi, were first meeting. So hopefully we'll see what's happening and uh, <clears throat> remains to be seen. So keep that in mind. And I'll turn it over to Jim now to talk about the spy because he definitely talked about that last night. And boy, was he dead on. Yep. Jim, well, tell us what you were, what you said yesterday and, and what happened today with the spy. Yeah. Before the, the, year, the end of the year, I said you know i think the market's going to turn around we're going to see positive territory in 2019 so here's your yearly chart i've got these red lines for for the, the channel that i used to play and then the oversold area which is down here in the yellow lines and i called this bottom at 234 and then just one two three four five six seven eight days later we're up here and we hit my target that i called at 255.13 so I'm going to pull up a 20-day chart, and I was, you know, I'm, I, sometimes I'm impressed and sometimes I'm not. But when I called this at the bottom and I pulled out my crystal ball here in Stock Twits and told everybody we were going to have a real positive 2019, and then it went ahead and bounced up, hit this first resistance that I had at 247.05, bounced up around, pulled back a little bit, and then all of a sudden today. We hit that 255.13, so I was very pleased with this trade. And I think there was people in the room even playing playing on it. So that's what I got to say about the SPY. I think that call from that 231, 232 level all the way up here to 254 was a sweet call in just a few, you know, a week and a half time. I expect it to probably pull back right here to around 253 and then continue on up. I'd like to get it back up here in the red channels up here, and that's where, and we'll see that definitely. I'm, I'm not discouraged one bit. I do believe that we will see it go back to its natural highs at 
before sooner than later let's put it that way and then we had another nice play today Vegas you want to talk about Roku a little bit yeah well first of all um, I gotta say that we've been watching Roku last week and uh, even obviously today and uh, Jim's gonna talk about what he was looking and and it's really thanks to Jim uh, that uh, people in the room were actually swing trading Roku from last week and he even talked about it today and uh you know not everyone you know i gotta remember you know I'm my you know the purpose of the i love stocks channel is you know jim and i are really focused on helping new people and helping people with small accounts learn about things and grow and you know a stock like roku would not appeal to me because it's too expensive with a smaller account if you're new i wouldn't want to trade roku but you know what i would have looked at the options and that's exactly what was done so the options, okay, uh, especially the ones, like I said, small accounts, the options call on Roku, it was a $39 option call, meaning that you're hoping that Roku goes to $39. Uh, if it goes more, then your option trade is worth more money. So it's almost like you're placing a bet. So to buy one contract, which technically gives you 100 shares. So you buy a contract the similar way you'd buy a stock, you place your order, and the contract price was one dollar and sixty four cents times a hundred shares is a hundred and sixty four dollars is actually what it's costing you to buy one contract so we have someone that actually bought a contract and they paid a hundred and sixty four dollars for one contract so again with a smaller account that's really not big money um and guess what that dog went what was the high of day, Jim? On, I just can't see it right the second. Oh, it was up. It was up in the 43, 43 bucks. Okay, so the value of the option call went all the way up to five thirty-five, which means that the hundred and sixty-four dollar investment went to five hundred and thirty-five dollars, a profit of three hundred and seventy-one dollar profit on a one hundred and sixty-four dollar investment. Let me tell you. That is an, a fabulous way to grow an account. And this person that bought the option call is actually a pretty new trader. And uh, she's doing phenomenal. And I love hearing stories. And she's sharing her idea. And I got to say, she is killing it in options and loving this opportunity where this is life changing, you know, taking a small amount of money and uh seeing it grow on a bullish chart and thanks again to jim's call on where he was looking to see roku go that helped basically pick the right option strategy so congratulations to the people in our room uh that did that and uh, a lot of accounts in here and uh very, very happy their accounts are going very happy people so jim i'm gonna let you talk about roku but i just want to mention like roku is a really cool company i mean they have um roku tv they got mobile apps um they also have a lot of um hd products i mean their website's really interesting um so if you ever check out roku i mean i don't even know if people have roku uh subscriptions but um very interesting product and uh interesting uh play on the reversal of this stock so what do you see happening, Jim, on Roku? Well, on Roku, I, like I said, when I called the bottom in the, in the market, it decided to go ahead and turn up like all these other stocks have done. And I've been screaming, man, if you have anything you like, look at them. Because this market's rebounded. So right out of the gate, this is what caught my attention. And I've been watching this stock all year long. I watched it hit down here at the lows at the beginning of the year back in, you know, March. In April, when it was back down here at the support level of 3114, and it ran all the way up to $77. And then for the last three months, it pulled back, and then we had that December that was probably the worst December that I could ever, ever been recorded in Wall Street history. So I just, you know, for seeing something like that for the first time, I knew it was overdone. So it bounced off at 2630 level, and I just noticed the momentum. And then when I got in the room today, 
and I started listening to the scanner, I noticed right out of the gate that it started popping up pre-market here at 3462. So I'm sitting here early in the morning before the market, I mean during the 6 o'clock hour, and I'm saying Roku's going to be the one today. Roku's going to be the one today, and I'm telling you it's going to go to 39 bucks. And if anybody in here wants to debate it with me, please do. Well, it wasn't probably an hour into the day. It hit that 39, and from 34 up to 39, that's a that's a four dollar and some flip. And then it ran all the way up to my next resistance. I had it 42.76 and stopped. I'm going to pull up the year's chart to show you what I'm looking at. I got these three trend lines. When it broke out, I called the pullback right here. You see that big gap? I called that little pullback, and then everybody started jumping in this thing and rolled it up to 39, and then some even took it up to 42. But that's a pivot point, maybe a resistance level, right in here on the yearly chart. So I was pretty, pretty sure that we were going to hit that 39 and then bounce up to 42. So we did that. Something like this, it's overextended, 10 bucks, $12 in two days. Needs to pull back and consolidate. So let's see if we can get it back down to 39. If not, it'll take off to the next resistance, which is right around 4430. But I would love to see this pull back, just maybe even to 40, 4065 area, right in there. So that's Roku. Keep it on your watch list and just. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> it's just a beautiful call today. <laughs> Jim likes Roku. And I was really excited okay. about this. And I think when my excitement kind of filled the room, and then they just said, oh, man, he's 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 over excited. This, this is going to run. And, you know, it's just a good feeling when you can call a stock like that. Well, it's a great feeling to call a stock, especially if it goes in the right direction. And that's what people like. Yep. You know, yep. nobody likes to be in a trade that is not going to move. No. Nope. Um, and sometimes patience. I mean, this was one of those that we had a lot of patience in. So yep. congratulations to the Roku traders that swinged it last week. But a big congrats to those option traders. My God, that was a great, a great trade. And I think it's going to go back up. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah, the momentum in the market's going to carry a lot of these stocks back up to where they were, to their previous highs, by the end of the year or sooner. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Oxum, A-X-S-O-M-E. A-X-S-M, Jim. <laughs> oh. So this is um, Axome Therapeutics. Uh, they had news, and, you know, this company is into, obviously, a biopharmaceutical company, they actually develop therapies for the central nervous system, and they have actually four clinical stage candidates. So they have like AXS 05, 7, 9, and 12. And actually, the one that's labeled number five is in a phase three trial um, for uh, resistant depression. So I like that. And um, <coughs> it's got some serious um you know they have a lot of stuff in the pipeline so i'm really liking that one but the news today on this particular stock was about the ax05 and they said that there was significant improvement uh in uh depressive symptoms also uh the data supported ongoing development of the treatment in the resistant depression and um, the company did host a conference call about this earlier this morning. Uh, but that was like really good news to send this stock on a little bit of a run. And, um, you know, 51% of, of the patients in the trial experienced three or more major depressive episodes prior to enrollment. And then 23% of the participants that received first line treatment. Um, you know, prior to prior to the treatment with the study medication, saw an improvement. So that was really good news. So, um, Jim, I'm gonna let you talk about the chart, but I really like what this company is doing. I mean, they're even involved in Alzheimer disease. Um, I mean, so many great things. Um, I really think this company has a lot more news that we're gonna probably hear about in 2019, just because they have so many things in the pipeline. They actually have like five more things going on for 2019. So this is not the end of this company. And I'm going to let Jim tell us what he sees on the chart. 
but we're going to hear more about this company throughout the year. All right. Well, one thing I liked about this stock today is that we broke out of the gate just high as could be. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's the year's chart, okay? You see this little line up here? I had to go back to three years on this thing to find resistances today. And we had a resistance high of 1371 three years ago. Well, this sucker kept running up, kept running up today. I mean, I was just going nuts with this stock today. This was my play of the day. And so we got to hit this next resistance of 894. I just drew that line in there from this previous three-year high. I don't know if we're going to get up there because this thing, I mean, it bounced up from a support level down here at 217 all the way up to the day high, which was, let me pull that up real fast. And see right out of the gate, I knew this thing was on fire. And I mentioned in the room, I said, this is going to be my play of the day because the volume spike. And then we had the share rotation on it. And that came probably about not even midway through the day when we hit that. So the volume was definitely in involved in this stock. And I called the breakout. So I followed it up here with the uh, 15 EMA. Kind of just kept pulling it up, you know, and looking at it. And then... Here's my moving averages on this one. I mean, this, I was really excited about this trade today. So I had three different supports that I resistances that I made that I was going to call support later on throughout the day. I had one here at 585, 651. I mean, look at this. 260 all the way to 889. I called the pullback right here from 769 back to that 580 support. I told the room to load up. Some of them got in, some just kind of, st I mean, the, the scanner was going off. There were just stocks everywhere that people could have played today. We had a golden cross here. We had a golden cross here. It bounced all up and traded a new high. Pulled back to my last resistance that I had at 695. Bounced on up to about 739, 745. People were scalping this on the downside. So, you know, I always say, don't rush into a trade like this. Let it come to you. And if you didn't rush into it this morning, you had a chance for it to come back to you at my resistance level. And I've, I've, I've just, I just can't emphasize how important it is to take that profit, especially on a run like this from 260. Let me repeat, 260 to 889. That's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a $6 and dollars flip right there in a matter of, you know, a third of the day. So let's keep this thing on watch. I think it should pull back to be healthy. I like, you know, the 6, 585. I'll probably have to come in here and draw some new supports on it tomorrow. But I want that 585 to hold. But, you know, again, something like this, you just don't know. And you just want to be careful. Play it off the supports. Let it come to you. Don't chase it. And that's a X S M. And okay. Next, next one we're going to talk about Vegas is what you you picked out for the bonus yesterday in the aftermarket report. Oh yeah. Hopefully you guys listened to the video and got your bonus play because that bonus play actually was a nice play today. Actually, I think I even surprised Jim with that one. You did. Uh, so that one was our beautiful bonus of dries. Uh, that one had a nice open today at 620, ran as high as 684. And, um, you know, I still think the chart's bullish. And, uh, you know, this also dries, hasn't had a run like this since June. So that was a good, uh, a good move today. So congratulations for those people that had it, you know, on their watch list and uh, liked the weekly chart. And thought, you know what, let me just wait and see for some volume to come in. And then look to day trade the stock. So if you day traded it, congratulations. If you're actually still sling trading it, I think it's still got momentum. And has an opportunity to probably still have a bit of a continuation. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on what you see here on the chart? Because it has had a little bit of a pullback, though, from uh, today's high of day. What a call, Vegas. You done did it to me again. <laughs> That well, was a good surprise. Yeah, I was, you know, I've got, 
I, I didn't question her about the call because I knew it was bullish, but I didn't think we were going to have this kind of breakout. I thought we were going to go back to my resistance level right around 623, which she called it down here right around 612. And I said it had to break that 623 in the aftermarket report. And then if we got to get if we had a, a higher high, it would be right around 632, 633. But this sucker had a had a day high, and you can see the channel as it's going up. This is a beautiful channel with a resistance right here, and something like that. I mean, just I was impressed. I've been watching this stock for probably every bit of 14 years, so I'm going to pull back. I'm going to make this a one day, and I noticed yesterday or not Friday that it was bouncing up, hit my 613 level, and I've been calling this down here at 520, as you see in this channel that I had here on the three month. This 520 area has always been a solid support, and I said anything under five is a real strong buy. So we broke past that resistance at 623. She ran it up. She took it to 684. <coughs> Keep this stock on watch. I know a guy messaged me today. We were talking about, I talked about the run it did from five bucks up to a hundred something. And this guy in our room was in that trade and he showed me his little ticket. <laughs> was, I'm not going to name no names, but I was really impressed that he got that because I didn't, I didn't take that run. I, I played it, I flipped it, but he took it all the way up to over $113, I think. And that was dry. So I'm not saying that's going to happen again, but I'm saying this. We had a breakout here, so it might pick up momentum, and we might see a lot newer highs, and hopefully we can see a new channel come out of dries this coming year in 2019. So keep it on watch. Pullback support now is going to be 623. So if we get down to that 623, I want it to hold. I don't want it to dip below that. I want it to create a new channel. And Vegas was spot on with this ticker yesterday, so kudos to Vegas. That was well, thanks. and I hope uh, you whoever listened uh, had a, a trade, you know, a good trade. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I didn't even trade it myself because I was so busy with um, option calls and and uh, AXSM and scalping that one and uh, doing a couple other different kinds of trades. So I didn't even, you know, trade drives, but I know some people did. So congratulations, you know, oh, yeah. it really is about helping people find a good setup and hopefully it works out. And in this case, it did. So I'm, I'm really pleased. So I, congratulations. I, I've been bullish on this stock for a whole year because they stopped and they split. They stopped the split. And they're going to stop. They stopped the uh, offerings. They just said, we're stopping it because, you know, it had a bad reputation for every time it would go up. The next day, you'd get a split or an offering. And it just, this is a good company. And it's way, way oversold. From I remember this stock was trading at 80 bucks at one time. So, yeah, I think it's just way oversold. It's, and with this coming blast in the new year of 2019, we ought to get a lot more out of it. And the next one, Vegas, Absolutely. the next one you're going to talk about is going to be your apps. Yeah, so APPS, you know, I do like the stock. This is uh, APPS. And the reason it's called apps, because you know what? They're in the apps business. So it's called Digital Turbine. And uh, this company is known to actually create mobile apps. And uh, it's, you know, what they do is that they, they develop mobile apps so that um, people could use it, companies could use it uh, to obviously create and engage uh, a user experience. Cause they know, you know, a lot of people use their phones or they're using iPads and this is a way to just get people connected with their industry. So Digital Turbine creates these apps uh, so that uh, it helps companies build revenue streams and also advertisers to help reach users across the globe. Interestingly, the company, I didn't even know this. I mean, they got offices in Texas, North Carolina. They got one in Australia. They got one in Singapore. They have one in San Francisco. And they got one in Tel Aviv. I'm like, wow, I did not know that about the company. So um, that is good to know. Now, apps used to has been in the past a um, former runner, and so I did uh, notice today that the stock um, was moving uh, during the day, and uh, I did call actually a swing trade idea on the stock, and uh, quite pleased with the movement that this has had 
actually after hours. So we did call the trade idea today. And um, the idea was called at $2.28. And I did mention to the room that I did like the weekly chart and that this would be good for a swing trade for a continuation. So uh, quite happy with that one because a nice little gap up after hours. Yeah, this is one that we should have really paid attention to because we had this thing charted up by the bottom at 112. Yeah. And it ran all the way up to 137. And then in the last mm -hmm. couple of months, we had a you know pretty good little climb and it pulled back to that 200 SMA right here. We have a golden cross on the early chart. Once that happened, stock just ran on up. So I'm going to draw a couple trend lines in here where I think could be a pullback. I'm going to put one right here. People always wonder how I do this. I'm going to be looking at that right there. I'm just looking at a daily right now. Try and find some supports and some resistances. And I run them all the way across the chart. So there's another one right there. I'm going to put that. See how it hit that little line right there. I want to bring this down to a 20 day. There you go. See. I broke past all my resistances. So I'm going to start drawing some new lines in here where I think the supports are going to be. We did have a little pullback after hours here at 235. And then we have another resistance right here at 244. And at 252, the year high. Now I'm going to pull it down to a daily. One minute. And I'm going to see if I need to adjust anything. I see one spot right here I probably need to put in at 232 level. And I'm pretty satisfied with that. Maybe I'll throw a dot right in here. We had a 250 high, 5 high, it pulled back here. I think we're looking at around a 235. So if this pulls back down here to the 232 level, that's where I think I'm going to find support. So I'm going to change that property to blue. That way it will keep my attention when I look at it tomorrow because I would like to play this stock. And if that don't hold, we might be able to bring it break back down here to this level at 223. So I'm putting that line in there. I'm going to tox it with blue just like that and there we go so we've got a support level at 232 I don't want to see it go below that if it does we could see 223 to 226 we're at 235 right now so that's you know that's a that's, that's an easy possibility that could happen this has had a beautiful run and I'm going to repeat that one more time Look at this, all the way from 161 on that dip, last two weeks, it ran up to 252, so that's a 90 cent bounce, and we're going to pull back a little bit, consolidate, and then maybe we can continue on up. And I'm going to pull up the one more year chart, because I always like to look back at the past, history repeats itself, and we've got a little more higher, we can take it up here to the 252 if it wants to go ahead and bubble on up. So this is apps. I think it's a it's a, a, a great company of what they do because I'm always talking about apps this, apps that. So that is APPS, and then we've got a real nice one here. Vegas loves this stock. Oh, I love it for now. <laughs> you sure do. Oh, yeah. AMD. Spit it out. So we've been all over this AMD. I mean, look at that. I mean, $106 million shares traded today i mean this has been amazing to us because especially on the option side like we've been really uh trading the options and getting ones for 19 dollar calls 20 dollar calls 20 50 calls 21 dollar calls like you name it we are in it so we had a good run today with the option calls now i do want to mention that amd had news today and the news that they did have, <clears throat> excuse me, was that um, they were offering, um, uh, you know, some new processors um, for mainstream and Chromebook laptops. So they did announce that uh, for 2019, they have notebook segments, second generation. Uh, they named all these different models and they mentioned that, they're, you know, they're fast, efficient, they're optimized. They're elevating the performance of the Chrome books. And they also announced that starting this quarter, gamers, creators, and enthusiasts will be able to install 
Radeon software um, to bring the latest GPU features and game optimization to all systems that are powered by AMD Ryzen processors with Radeon graphics. So, um, excuse me, people said that they're happy about that. And uh, apparently this product is going to give up to 10 hours of video playback battery life. So that's actually really good, especially people that play games for hours. I think they're going to love it. So um, people can be start uh, able to purchase um, the second gen Ryzen mobile powered notebook starting this quarter and expected to launch throughout 2019. So these notebooks are going to come through Acer, Dell, Huawei, Lenovo, and Samsung. So there's a lot of stuff happening with AMD. So as a result, the market was happy. And Jim, can you show that um, yep. report I gave you that shows yep. the money flowing in? Yep. Okay, so that report there, uh, one of my friends, Tony, um, he has this report. This data is pulled uh, from the internet, but we've had the actual uh, programmer that we know that could take actually the block trades and convert the volume to dollar flow because I like to follow the money and so does Tony. So we've taken actually the block trade report and actually convert the share price and obviously the volume that was bought with the block and convert it to a dollar amount just so that it gives you a really good snapshot of how much money is flowing into the stock. And you could see that on AMD, millions of dollars of block trades. So um, obviously Wall Streets are liking it. And uh, so far I'm still bullish on AMD until the chart proves otherwise, because you know you can't expect a stock to be green forever. Uh, there's gonna come to a point where the stock, you know, maybe it's time and it's gonna reverse the way down. Um, but for now, still bullish, and I'll let Jim talk about that because he usually will point out when he thinks it's kind of exhausted itself and it's going to now pull back. So, oh, yeah. Jim, what are your thoughts on AMD? Well, we're, we've are we been watching AMD for a year, Vegas and I have. Yes. And we've had a double bottom on this thing in, in three months right here at that 1603, right when I called my crystal ball out and said we were going to have a reversal in the market. So everybody, you know, I say this thing's oversold, oversold, oversold. We're at 16 bucks, And so, you know, you've had a couple weeks to get in this thing at 16 and ride it up to 20 in less than two weeks. So we're, we're getting up close to resistance level, which I think is right around 2190, somewhere around there. But this has been a wonderful call with, with the calls of the option trade. And also, it's been a good scalper tool. You can scalp this thing every day because it does like to pull back. You know, it, 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 to let other traders get in there. I mean, others are going to pick up when the other ones sell. So I'm going to pull up this 20-day. And you can see what I mean. We had that hard sell-off in, in December. And it was just unnecessary. Everybody that trades this market knows, knows that. But they wrote it on down. So everybody made a lot of money as it went. But people lost money, too. They don't know how to trade a market like this. So we called this down here at the low support at 16 bucks, and I had to support down here at 1638. We bounced up and hit that 1870 area and it pulled back. And then for the last two days it's been a solid attack from 17 all the way to 2056 with today's high almost hit my trend line there at 2073. Now these are my extended trend lines. I use these same trend lines all year long. I want to make that clear is I'm the master of the extended trend line pattern. And here we go. You can see I've played these before and we said when we called this thing down at nine bucks last year we said this thing is going to go on up. If it hits 20 we're going to take it to 30 and look what happened. We run that thing all the way up to 34 on upgrades. People have raised their target up to 30. So it pulled back, hit that support level, bounced on up. Then we had had the cross that went down, sold off, and here we are getting back up to that resistance level, right around 2190, 22 bucks. So let's see if we can get another squeeze out of this, but it needs to pull back. It just needs it needs to needs to have a little bitty rest, 
but people are buying I mean people are everybody's watching this stock and that's AMD keep it on your watch list um, I can't tell you you know I can probably tell you this thing will go back to 20 and bounce on back up so that's going to be my support level here at 20 bucks anything below that's going to be a strong buy especially right around 1960 so I want to keep that in mind keep them numbers in mind 1960 20 bucks and then we got to break this resistance of 2075 to move another leg up and that's AMD and then we're going to talk okay. about our bonus stock so my little bonus stock that I'm you know just have it on watch I mean I'm not in it I just I'm interested in it but I'm not in it so bonus today is called uh, DFRG which is for Del Frisco's restaurant group well they just had their earnings. They're a company in Texas. They have restaurant chains all over. They did have an uh, earnings increase of uh, 238 to 24.2%. So they went up to uh, 124.7 million versus 100.4 million uh, last quarter. So that's actually really good. And there's, you know, reason why they had their um, contributions from the Barcelona wine bar. Uh, very good, interesting website. They're into uh, steakhouse. They're into grills. They're into bar tacos. Um, you know, they have a very interesting concept. So the head office, like I mentioned, is in Texas. And they have 73 restaurants across 16 states and Washington, D.C. And uh, I think I'm going to have to check out this place when I go down to Florida. Um, they have, they're very into, very upscale street food. They're known for freshly squeezed uh, beverages they have a very stylish looking modern restaurants uh, so definitely going to be checking this place out um but aside from that what appealed to me was the chart um i did like the fact that there was nice volume today i like the fact that there was a low of 766 had a really nice move consistently going a little higher and went all the way up to 801 so um i also saw some block buys today as well uh so keep it on watch but i think jim's going to talk about where he would consider getting in if he was going to look to <laughs> trade the stock and uh you know keep it on your watch list for you know we might see a potential continuation here so jim what are your thoughts on you know this particular stock and what you know what you're seeing on the chart yeah this is some of the block trade she was talking about right here Size twenty thousand dollar value, one hundred fifty nine grand on one trade. So people are investing in this, in the stock right now. You can see these huge blocks. So I'm going to pull up a yearly chart here. We've got a little channel we're working in. This thing has bounced up from the bottom low of six eighteen. Six eighteen. May I repeat that? And we've got a resistance level right now that we need to break. That's this 804. You see the high, the year highs was up here at 1885. So this is this has been oversold, like everything else in the market last year, sold off. And I'm telling everybody, you have any favorite stocks, man, pull them up and look at them because they're everything's oversold, big time. And so we've got to break this resistance level. I'm going to pull up the 20 day. First, I'm going to pull up a three year. I just want to see what this looks like. Yeah, so we got to break that 18 high. You see we've had a double top there, almost a triple. And then here this year it just pulled back ridiculously. And this is a high-end restaurant, and that's what I like about it. If I was going to take a lady out like Vegas, this is where I would take her. And so we've got a 20-day chart right here. You can see how we've created a little bowl, cup and handle. We had that hard sell-off that I've told everybody. We hit the bottom. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. She went all the way up to 801 today. I got next resistance if we want to break it to 831 tomorrow. Now this can pull back to a support level, and that'll be right around 766. That is 766 on DFRG for low support. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. Then that'll show a little sign of weakness. And I see a little trend line right here. I'm going to add to this. It's 730 right here. You see how it matched that right over there? And that's what I do. You know, I go to the year chart and I, I, I digest them down. And I find little clues in the, in the, in, now I'm looking at the 20. 
So I'm going to pull up the, the daily. Daily one minute. Beautiful stock to scout. Because it hit that 801 high. It hit that eight, 801 high. Pulled back to support at 766. Bounced back up there and tried to find resistance here. I would have probably gave up on this stock and took my profit. But actually, after close to the end of the day, we hit that support level and bounced up beyond it. So this is one you want to keep on watch. We're not in it right now, but we're going to be. We're going to scalp it for sure. This is DFRG. And that's a really good okay. bonus call, Vegas, because I do like this restaurant. Now, high end. And the way people are making yeah. money in Wall Street, they're going to that flock like at this place. looks like my style of restaurant. That's right. Good, though. <laughs> and I also... You know. Also, you can look good, but not have good food. <laughs> That's happened before. Yep, and I also forgot to, at the beginning of the video to say subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit Ring the bell so you can get our future updates. We're going to try to get us a 1,000 uh, subscribers here in a couple of months, and that would be a really sweet thing. Yes, yeah. and also, again, if you're interested in a classes gym, yep. please email me, Vegas, that I love stocks. I already had quite a lot of people sign up who are interested um so there's still a little few more spaces but uh please email if you're serious about learning about charts um also one last comment uh wkhs 13g by marathon asset management so you may want to keep that one on watch for tomorrow there might be some activity on it what was that so, ticker again uh wkhs workhorse group okay so and we got two it. extra bonuses on there. Yeah, so just keep that one on watch. Okay, anything else you okay. want to share with the audience? And... No, I think uh, we've had a good day. I think great. I love seeing um, a lot of women traders are uh, with me and uh, my mission in 2019 and my mission for a long time is going to be to have more women traders trading and learning about the markets even not you know if you're not going to get into stocks then at least learn about options trading and uh i think it's a good opportunity even if you have a job um you could still do swing trades with a really good setup uh it really is about picking the right setups um to help you succeed so i love the fact that i'm seeing more women traders uh joining i love helping women succeed i love men doing well too and all the men in the are just so supportive. So what a really beautiful room to be in. So, you know, I don't need to talk about it. You can just come check it out and do what I mean. So I think just the feedback we get, some of them just actually make me teary eyed because they're just so special. What people tell us, you know, the messages that people write, very heartful, thankful messages from people so i want to thank everybody for listening following subscribing and look forward to seeing you tomorrow and hopefully another green day tomorrow so congratulations everyone and talk to you tomorrow i do like the stock that you just mentioned here wkhs oh gosh jim's obsessed see why he loves stocks i really do what I'm do you want to say about wkhs we're, we're hitting a pivot point area right here which is right around 74 cents so this thing can ride on up to 84, 92. I've already got this thing charted out already before. So I, I must have been watching it. We need to break a dollar. So let's keep this, this one on watch tomorrow. That's WKHS Workhorse. And I, and I just want to remind everybody, I start my $2,000 challenge tomorrow. I want to try to get up to 20 grand. And if who knows, I feel like this is going to be a real good year this year. And this is the aftermarket report with Jim in Vegas. Today's date, January the 7th, 2019. And our last quote, we love stocks. All right. Have a good night, everyone.